Hi, everybody. Um, I have the great pleasure of sitting here with Ram Matanzio, who has been an inspiration to a lot of us, but um, you know, for me, a colleague, a friend, and a mentor. And as I'm sure you all know, Fran has recently retired after a 45 year career. Just to put that in perspective, I was in first grade when she started here. Um, and I'm no spring chicken. But this conversation feels very uh, comfortable because this is basically what we've been doing for the last 17 years. Um, a lot of you, maybe your um, former students that have really needed advising advice and the place that you could find Fran was in uh, the studio as you were having coffee in the morning. So um, I'm going to ask a few questions and then there will be some time at the end for you all to um, make comments or ask questions. Um, after we're done, and hopefully I'll ask some questions that you would want to ask yourself. Uh, so I want to start with a piece that you all can probably see above my head here. Um, it's not your work. It's the one piece in the show that's not yours. So could you talk a little bit about what it is and why you decided to include it? Well, uh, that is actually the telegram I received asking if I was interested in coming to interview for this position. And this dates back to the point where there were no cell phones, no text messages, no email. I didn't, we didn't even have answering machines. And since I was at work during the day, the only way to reach me during the day was to send me a telegram. So I got this telegram. At least it didn't come from the express. <laughs> <laughs> Not that much. But uh, so I got this telegram, which directed me to call the university collect. But at that time, there was one university number, and then there were you would go through the operator who would distribute. I don't remember if I called collect or not, but it, obviously I got here. <laughs> Ended up doing the interview. And, well, and it's sort of amazing that you still. And I, 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 not to it. I found it in, the, in a box in my desk, and I thought, oh, that would be kind of a fun thing. To yeah, do. yeah, <laughs> it's quite a document. Um, so you were living in Boston when you were hired here, uh, but you grew up in Michigan, so you were familiar to a certain extent with the Midwest. Um, what were your first impressions when you got here, of both of West Central Indiana and also of the Department of Art? Well, it, it was a big change. I, I first of all, I grew up in Michigan, so I knew where Indiana was, but my friend Sharon and I got the map out in Mount Terre Haute. Um, I flew to Chicago and then got on a commuter jet to fly to Terre Haute. And Dave Erickson met me at the airport and picked me up. And the interview process went very well and I was very happy with the position. Um, I, it was a bit of a culture shock in terms of coming from Boston where at that time, Boston had the highest single population in the country, and we knew that Terre Haute, not so everybody was married, including the students. <laughs> and so, social, socially, I had a huge adjustment. Um, because you were very young, too. I mean, I you were probably <laughs> the same age as a right. lot of your students. Right. And so, uh, people would come into the studio, work look for the teacher, and they had all the time. <laughs> um, students had to, you know, Point of where I was. Um, it, it, it was hard. I mean, I was the only woman on faculty and, and I was also younger, and so you know, patted me on the head a little more than I would like. But I think I made a, a niche for myself. I mean, you know, people respect what I was able to do, and the students you know, were very engaged and they were focused on my work. So it worked out. Mm -hmm. so, so over the course of your career, you've produced a huge body of work. It has to be in the thousands of images. And just to give you all a little bit of a sense of context, a few years ago, Fran had a sabbatical semester and produced nearly 120 pieces out of that one semester. So given that volume of work, 
you went through and you chose a piece to represent each year, how did you make those choices? Um, well, some years were easier than others, and there was one year which I'm not going to show you which one. Um, <laughs> I'm so worried now. <laughs> where it was like I really wasn't crazy about any of the work, but I picked one anyway. So, and there were other years where I could have picked like six, mm -hmm. and you know, I, there were a couple pieces that didn't make the cut that I really am very fond of. And so, um, but I really wanted to represent all of the different things that I've done in photography from a, from a techno, technical standpoint as well as from a visual standpoint. And so to make sure that I included some work uh, in alternative process and some work in one of the collage pieces and um, those digital and film base and some of the hand color pieces, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So you know, I tried to make it be representative without but, you know, some and in hindsight, if, if I was doing it again, I might go back and change it. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, it's it's like, you know, jurors talk about right. if they were to go and jury a show another day, they might choose a different body of work. Well, and I think what you just said, um, that you wanted to include, obviously, dark room and digital and alternative processes, that speaks to the range of things that you brought to this program to, to maintain a beautiful darkroom space, to keep up with new technologies, to offer alternative processes to students. Um, you just have provided photography students and, and all of the students with such a depth of experience. How have you responded to those changing technologies in your own work? Well, I, you know, when I was a student, I mean, I basically just did my own darkroom work. So, I mean, I taught myself digitally. Which took a, a while before I felt really comfortable with using it, but I felt like I had to. I mean, it was too, too much a part of what photography was becoming without it being the only thing. Um, I taught myself color therapy, which we did for a little while, and alternative processes, and you know, a lot of things. As I came across information that I thought would be beneficial to students, I would learn it and then teach students. Mm -hmm. So I don't use everything that I teach, but you know, I think I do a nice, I think there's a nice cross section from mm -hmm. the standpoint. So. Well, and I know for myself, just in the conversations that we've had over the years, you don't ever rest on what you've done before. So, you know, for those of you who don't know, though probably you, you do on some level, um, Fran never kept the same assignments, you know, she changed assignments up, um, learned new things, always curious about um, what she could bring to her students and her work. Uh, so you have, over the years, been a mentor to hundreds of students easily, but who were some of the people in your life who really encouraged you? Well, I started out as a painting major. <laughs> They would not have worked out very well for me. Um, my dad was really interested in photography, and so he, he, he did it as a kind of hobby. Um, and I enjoyed doing it, and so I thought, oh, I'll take the time. And so I thought, oh, I'll take a photography class, and then you know, he'll think that's cool, and blah, blah, blah. And so um, I did, and I, I found a niche for myself. Now, curiously, the first teacher I had who was very technically capable and very, and, and he was, you know, a good photographer, but he didn't think women were smart enough to learn the technology of photography. So <laughs> it was a bit Do of a challenge. He's probably not watching now, right? <laughs> I think he died. So. <laughs> he, uh, fortunately, before I finished that first class, I had already registered for a summer class with a different teacher who turned out to be a wonderful mentor for me. And so, and was very supportive and, and very imaginative and you know, we had a really great relationship. And so, otherwise I might have gone back to me, <laughs> which would have you know, probably not worked out real well for me. Um, so, uh, David Ryder was, was my instructor and he was also a 
has passed away. But uh, we stayed in touch for years after, um, you know, he was the one who sent me the announcement for this job. Um, so I, you know, always had that strong connection with him. Yeah. He, was, he thought you know, he wanted me to be out there teaching. So. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's that's so important. I know my own the people who were my mentors. They're the ones who really put the idea in my head that it was something I could do. And having, and I, I know he's been that person for many, many, many people. Um, we all who are in academia struggle and beyond academia with the balance between work and family. Um, for most of your career here, you were a single mom with three kids. So how did you manage that? Number one, and do you have any words of wisdom for all the rest of us who still struggle with those issues? Well, I think you realize you can do more than you think you can. Um, it, it was a challenge, but it wasn't an unpleasant challenge. I adore my children. I adore my grandchildren. I have a new grandson who was born two days ago. <laughs> Never, he's there watching. He's so, up there. Um, and I saw Milo a while ago. Oh, yes. <laughs> Um, I, you know, I think that we make choices, and so while I didn't anticipate, I didn't make a choice to be a single parent, as it turned out, I was a single parent, and so, um, you know, there were things that kind of got lost in the shuffle, but the important things for me was to prioritize that family, my job, and also being able to continue to make art, um, and a lot of times when my personal life was like, <laughs> Not very exciting, but you know, that was okay too. I have, I have lots of friends and you know, I know people that I always could rely on in terms of moral support as well as you know, other kinds of things. So, um, and I'm a good, I think, prob or, uh, or you know, I, I can keep things, I can juggle. <laughs> I'm a good juggler from the standpoint of being able to keep lots of things in balance with them. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm retired, it's like, just I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> <laughs> I have all this time and no, no, not a lot of demand. So I'm still trying to adjust to that notion of you know, being kind of at loose ends on some days. You've got a lot of knitting done. I have. <laughs> <laughs> the, Pretty the, remarkable amount of knitting. <laughs> The pandemic has, you know, restricted my options, and so yeah, I turned to me. <laughs> well, and speaking of that, um, my next question was really uh, about that specifically. I remember we had a conversation at the beginning of the spring semester about how you were keeping a book of lasts. You know, we don't often think about the last time that we were doing something, but you were really thinking about, well, this is the last time I'm gonna make a syllabus, this is the last time I'm gonna read a class for the first time. Um, and then, bam, <laughs> spring 2020 <laughs> didn't quite go as planned. Um, that had to have been hard. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I did, in, in part, this exhibit was supposed to be up in April. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, fortunately there was space to do it now, but I think that the, it, you know, it was hard for everybody. I mean, nobody ever would have anticipated what we were going to go through of course, that semester and then into this semester. But one of the things that I feel really bad about is I didn't get to say goodbye to students. And, you know, I mean, everybody was just kind of scattered immediately. And so, um, it's, you know, the, the whole virtual thing is not quite the same. No. <laughs> there was no hugging going on. And so, you know, and to not see senior shows and to not, you know, participate in you know, everything was, was difficult. So, I mean, that I think was something that nobody can change at this point. But my, my book of last sort of got abbreviated because all of a sudden it was like, that was it. Well, so, you had a first of and then I had first, first time that you ever had to leave in the middle of a semester because of the pandemic. First time I did a critique online, you know. Yeah, was like, that was not something that was really right. <laughs> um, 
So is there, before we open it up to your questions or comments, is there anything that you want to communicate to the men? There are a lot of people watching, um, friends, colleagues, family, former students. Um, is there anything that you want to say in particularly? Um, without getting all emotional. <laughs> Um, Too late. <laughs> it, you know, it's, it's, I never, when I first came here, I thought, oh, I'll stay for a couple of years and I'll get a good job. It just felt like the right fit. And so, um, you know, I, I, I think added something to the department in terms of my skill set and I um, relished it. I, you know, I really enjoy teaching. So I think that that's something. that kept me going and, and for a longer time than I needed to. I mean, clearly I could have retired quite a while ago, but um, I miss it, you know, and I'll probably miss it for a while. <laughs> it's nice to have free time, but you know, I thought I'd, I'd go at this and I wouldn't want to have to be teaching this semester um, under the current limitations. But I think that it's, um, it's gonna really, I made the right choices in terms of being here and, and having great colleagues and you know, making lots of friends. And, and I have a lot of students who I'm friends with who I still stay in touch with, which is also wonderful. So many of whom have also gone, gone on to teaching. Well, and speaking, I'm sure for everybody who's watching this, we all think you made the right choice. <laughs> for sure. Well, we'll see. Maybe somebody will throw that question out there. <laughs> ah, you should have retired 20 years ago. Um, Alex, do you want to, or do we have questions or? Sure. So if anybody has any questions, you are welcome to unmute yourselves now. Um, I think I have it so everybody can unmute. And say hello to Fran and Nancy. If we have any takers, I know there's a cute baby over there who's waving <laughs> at us. Um, trying to see everyone. Uh, We've got another waver. <laughs> Hi, Danny. Hi, Milo. Oh. Hold on, let me turn their sound up so they can hear you. Turn the light off. Oh, oh that's what yes. Okay. There we go. Was it Milo who waved? Yeah. 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 Milo, you can talk now. Hi, Milo. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Oh, was that it? Oh, my. Hi, Sammy. Hi. <laughs> Just the grandkids or just the kids are going to talk? I guess so. <laughs> They're hard acting all I'm not <laughs> seeing any questions in the chat. Hi, Fran. Oh my gosh, Sarah. Yes. <laughs> Probably your initial obnoxious <laughs> student. <laughs> I'm just wondering, uh, first of all, congratulations. You were uh, in my second semester. Because, wow. Oh, I think it was your first year. Um, you were second out. semester? We were gone the first semester because of Polly being born. Okay, then it was the second one. Absolutely. But I remember, I remember walking in and to sign up to your class and you told me it was full. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, it can't be full. But, um, and I haven't looked at the show yet, but it, I know it's kind of like asking you which, are, which of the kids you like the best, but is there one piece in this show that speaks to you the most? That's a hard one. Oh, couldn't hear? I, I know. That's, I mean, in, in some ways, they overlap a lot. Yeah. And so, and there were groups of things. I mean, do you, if there's not a favorite piece, do you have a favorite 
period of time or a favorite group of pieces, subject, either because of subject or... I really like the ones that we did with the paper. Mm -hmm. You know, the folded paper pieces, which was kind of the 90s. Um, those are ones that... Yeah. And those were the first pieces I ever saw of your work when I was here as a grad student. Um, Alex is showing some of the, Roxanne is showing some of the pieces. It's a bit of a glare. There's glare from the lights. But, but, you know, that group for me was something that was kind of different. And okay, I didn't get which one you were talking about. Is, is well, there any way that can show it? It's the series. She's, if you look at where Alexander Chamberlain is on the screen, yeah. there's a series of about eight or nine that we're all done using folded paper. Oh, okay. A little kind of architectural. Yeah, and so, and I remember one of the first things that struck me about those was I saw them from a distance and I thought they were architectural. And then I got up close and I could see the little edge of the paper. And I realized it was paper. And it, you know, I just think they are fascinating in that shifting scale. There is a, there are some images on the, the gallery website, not all of them, but some of these pieces. <laughs> hey, Fran? And there's going to be a video. Oh, I share. Hey. <laughs> Can you go, um, because the way in which the show is structured talks about those kind of various um, themes that that you have which is um maybe you can um talk about that a bit you know the the portrait and the, the more uh horticultural things in the paper and i'll do a quick summary <laughs> yeah just because most people haven't had the um the advantage of being able to be at, in the gallery the pieces behind me uh, when i first came here i had been photographed People I do that, and I liked photographing people that I knew. I felt more comfortable with that in terms of directing. I didn't know anybody here. <laughs> so I started, I did a series of self portraits, and, and part of that was also that I wasn't sure that I made the right decision, and it was such a huge change in terms of being living in Boston and then coming here and not knowing anyone and being you know, the only woman and blah, blah, blah. So I think that. That was actually a way, of, kind of therapeutic, as a way to kind of work through. And then I bought a house, which you know, is a unique thing to Terre Haute because how the resident housing was relatively inexpensive. Um, and then started photographing people in the house, and then I started photographing the architecture of the house. Um, and I had pretty good success with that, and had a gallery in Chicago, and, and was doing a lot of work. But I felt like I was getting kind of redundant in, in doing, you know, working to sell rather than working for my own interest. So I forced myself to then jump into something else, which was to photograph kind of still objects. So it's something I hadn't done before. And so I was photographing dried flowers and objects. And, but I discovered as I went through those that I started arranging them in kind of architectural term in forms. They had a lot of the same compositional elements. Um, as I was running out of things to photograph, being home with kids and you know, not having a lot of options to go out on my own, I started the, the paper series where I started folding up paper and creating little environments and shining lights through them. And, and you know, that went on for quite a while. And I really do like that group of images. Um, by the year 2000, I know we've already jumped up 25 years, the, you know, that's when I started working digitally. Um, you know, digital had been around for a while, but I wasn't real comfortable with it. And, and that was the point at which I started feeling like I could show that work, which continued some of the same ideas. They were all based in, still on that paper. Uh, but I could overlay things and play with color a little more, and it, it felt like it had some interesting options. Um, but one of the things that I've always felt was important 
it was, and then I kind of got back into architecture again because it really was the thing that I loved to work with the most. And using my digital camera, using my 35 millimeter camera, which is, you know, 40 some years old, but I'll still, I'll never give it up. Um, working with plastic pinhole cameras, you know, working with as many tools as I could find to keep myself feeling fresh about it. Learning new processes, you know, finding the right process for the, to fit with the kind of image I was doing. So, you know, that's the fascinating part for me, and that's something that I hope I'll be able to continue. I've set up a dark room at home now, so it's a little, it's a little funky, but you know, I think it'll work. Um, and you know, I'll, I'm hoping to, and obviously digital, I can, I can do the print, so set there. So. That kind of given, that's a quick summary. <laughs> yeah, that gave a, a sense of the, you know, all the various um, images, clusters of images. What are your plans to continue to create in the future? From Sarah. Um, well, you know, as I said, I have a dark room. I have my good digital printer. I'm not sure, at this point, I've been kind of restricted because I'm not going to a lot of places, and so I don't feel comfortable just wandering around or going to new places to photograph because of the virus. And, and so, at some point, that will be over. <laughs> um, and, you know, it, it, I don't have the pressure of, of like having to produce a certain amount of time or only being able to, to work when I'm you know, tied up with teaching. You know, I used to get a huge amount of work done in the summer. Um, and it wasn't, you know, during times where I was off teaching. When I'm teaching, it's really difficult to continue to make work. I would shoot, but then you know, the neighbors would sometimes not even get developed until later. So, you know, having this much freedom is nice, but I don't quite figure that out how to <laughs> discipline myself. <laughs> and you have an interesting possible book project in the works. I, yeah, I'm working on a, it's, it's tentatively going to be called something like Pillars of the Community and working with someone who directs the history museum. And so I'm photographing old architectural pillars uh, in, in residences and business commercial buildings that have historical significance. You know, there's a house that Senator Voorhees lived in, and that has pillars. And so we're going to do, she's going to write articles, and I'm going to do images, and we're going to hopefully put it into some kind of a book or something. So I've been kind of working with that, but so far, baby steps. <laughs> Other questions? Can I speak up? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Very good. First, Nancy, thank you for your role in doing this. Um, I just wanted to, uh, for Fran, because I haven't really had a chance to say goodbye to you during the course of the semester, and I hope I don't have to say goodbye to you. But just to thank you for your service to the department, and particularly, uh, you have been the advising guru uh, for, for the department. Endless hours put into doing that, and the students have really benefited. They've respected you for that. You were such a, really, such a powerful advocate for students, and so they're, I know that they're very uh, appreciative. Um, I also think that one of the marks as I've looked, I have two, two members of my family that are both artists at this point. One of the things you begin to look at is sort of the, the continuity of their engagement with the formal language that they're working with. And you have really sort of dedicated yourself to, to working through that with this very permutations. And it, it's made your work very exciting. Uh, Vic and I are pleased to own some of your work. Um, anyhow, uh, to say thank you. And finally, just to say that as chair of the personnel committee, um, <laughs> we're recommending you for reappointment. So we'd like for you to consider <laughs> that. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> if I was on sabbatical, I would be right there helping you with that cause. I think 
I signed a piece of paper that says I can't do that. So. <laughs> <laughs> there are children. Is it? Oh, so sorry. It can't, can't we just like, it's like the army. Can't you re enlist? No. Oh, well. There was some document I signed that said I called up for duty again. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> There were, as, as uh, Dr. Benjamin was thanking you, especially for the um, support of students, I noticed a whole lot of supportive messages from people saying, here, here. Um, oh. So <laughs> I think, you know, not only do the students feel that way, but those of us who have benefited from the many uh, years of experience. This just need someone to run the curriculum. And it is. <laughs> Yeah, any <laughs> takers? <laughs> Can I say something? Um, yeah, I, I probably am the person that n knows Fran the longest it, it, out of this cluster of folks as we were in undergrad and graduate school together. And it's been wonderful seeing the way in which you have taken um, photography and art making and teaching all through the years and the, the various iterations. It's been um, just so much of a pleasure to have you as a dearest friend. And, you know, um, I was also a colleague at Indiana State, and I know what um, Lloyd Benjamin said about um, your, your importance to the department and I, you know, I certainly agree with that in so many different ways, from your leadership roles to the advising to your teaching and your mentoring students. It's just been astonishing. And I'm so proud of you. And I, I really wish that um, we all could have celebrated together in the gallery and um but uh virtual hug to you congratulations okay i think i think that might be it oh kira we are here from the annex. I hope you can hear us. So I have a couple students. You want to say here? Hi. <laughs> Karen. Hello. Nancy oh. Karen. How are you doing? Oh, there you are. <laughs> Nancy Friend. I just wanted to let you know, congratulations, and you have always been an inspiration to me. So thank you. Thank you both already. I have a couple more here working. They're probably shy, but uh, we're here to share it with you, friend. We miss you already. And I was very fortunate to be able to work with you. I'm sad that you are retiring and leaving us, but I'm happy for you. And I'm sure that this is an exciting time for you to focus on your what you want to do. Um, but you must be sure that we're, we're already missing you and we send you a big hug, virtual hug as well. <laughs> Any other messages out there? Oops, I'm out of <laughs> space. I can say one. Um, I, uh, Fran and Nancy were both my very first teachers on my very first day of college, almost exactly eight years ago. Um, and they're both a huge part of why I continued here at Indiana State. Fran was my advisor for se almost seven years, and she was being great the entire time. And just both of you are great, Fran specifically, congratulations. Enjoy not being stressed out, even though you're always calm under pressure, you have so much grace and poise and you're an elegant human being. 
you operate your life in a way that everyone should aspire to. You're just really, really rad. That was beautiful, Zach. Thank you. All right. Well, I think that might be it. Oh, Justin, oh. Justin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're just seeing names, you know? So. Uh, How many pictures you take a year? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Some years, not so many, and other years, more than I should. So. <laughs> Hard to say. <laughs> that was a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. More time for Tai Chi now. Yes, uh, yes I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to ask Fran and Nancy to mute that computer, if you don't mind. Thank you and turn down the sound. Perfect, there we go. Now hopefully everybody can hear me without an echo. Um, this has been a lot of fun to set up. Um, I, like all of you, have been navigating through learning all new techno technological things. And so I hope that this was, um, fun and uh, a good time for not just Fran and Nancy, but for all of you out there. Thank you so much for joining us. We have a few more events this semester coming up. Um, check our website, indstate.edu backslash CAS backslash UAG. We've got the Masters of Fine Arts students coming up in a couple of weeks, and then we'll have our senior show on display as well. So check us out. Come tune in again with us in a couple of weeks for another um, live Zoom event. Hopefully it gets better and better every time. And I hope everybody stays safe and healthy. Thank you again to Fran and Nancy and a special thank you to Fran for all of your time here at Indiana State. I know I'm new, but I've seen your impact over the last year and it's absolutely incredible. Thanks you guys. Have a good day. <laughs>